and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about some practice problems and inequalities in a triangle. And as promised, I'm going to go back to that challenge problem that I gave to you in the lesson. I'm going to review it for you. Uh, if you didn't listen to the lesson, uh, I'll give you the problem again, and you can try it out on your own. Pause the video, and I'll go through and solve it for you. Okay, so here we go. We've got, uh, and this is from the lesson, but it's going to be a practice problem. I have the uh, diagram as defined. I'm listing the angles and numbers here. And I want to list the angles below in order of size from smallest to largest. So let's see what we can work out with this particular problem. So the first thing that we notice is that we have two right angles. And we know that if we have right angles in this case, the right triangles, those are going to be the largest angles. And these two angles, uh, 5 and 6, uh, as right angles, will therefore be the largest angles of uh, at least all of the angles except for the possibility of angle x, w, y. Uh, let's take a look at what we've got, and we'll go back to that in a second. So let's just say that uh, 5 is going to be equal to 6, and those are going to be the two largest angles. So let's work within the two uh, triangles on the left and right, and then we'll talk about the larger triangles. So there are three of them. We have three triangles, x, w, z, z, w, y, and then the larger triangle, x, w, y. So we've just established that 5 and 6, uh, angles 5 and 6, are going to be the largest angles and that they're equal to each other. Now let's take a look at the angles on the left hand, uh, the sides of the left hand triangle. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the angle. So we know that angle 6 is going to be the largest angle. Uh, I have a 5 and a 13. I have a right triangle, so I can determine that WZ length is going to be 12. All right, so that tells me that, uh, again, 6 is the largest, and then 1 is going to be larger than 2 because the side opposite 1 is 12, length of 12, and the side opposite uh, 2 is going to be length of 5. So I'm going to say 6 is greater than uh, angle 1, which is greater than angle 2. All right, now I'm going to move on to the triangle on the right. And I see I have a right uh, angle here, so 5 is the greatest. Of course, it's uh, the angle opposite the longest side of 15. And then I know that angle 4 is going to be greater than angle 3 because the side opposite angle 4 is 12, which is larger than the side opposite angle 3, which is 9. So I'm going to say that 5 is going to be greater than uh, angle 4, which is greater than angle 3. Okay, so I have 6 and 5, which are equal to each other, uh, and they're all greater than 1, 2, 4, and 3. All right, so let's go back and let's take a look at the uh, larger triangle. Let's see if we can establish a relationship there. And we're going to end up seeing that uh, angle 1 is going to be larger than angle 4. All right, so angle 1 is larger than 4 because it's opposite the side that's longer 15 than WX. So w, since WY is longer than WX, I can say angle 1 is greater than angle 4. So angle 1 is greater than angle 4. Okay, so this gives me, let's move things around. Uh, let's just, I think I'm going to eliminate this. So I'm listing the angles below in order of size from smallest to largest. So I'm going to take this piece out and, to give me some space. And I'm going to say 6 or 5 is equal to 6 which is greater than 1, uh, which is greater than 4. And I don't know where 2 and 3 are now. So let's think about where 2 and 3 lie. Well, I've already determined that angle 4 is greater than angle 3 from the prior relationship. So I know that if angle 1 is greater than angle 4, I know that it also must be greater than angle 3. So the question is, where does 2 uh, fit in uh, if angle 1 is going to be greater than angle 2? Where does it fit in in 4 and 3? OK, well, let's uh, again think about this again. We have angle 1, which is greater than angle 4, which is greater than angle 3. So let's say, and, and we know angle 5 and 6 are 90 degrees. So if I were to say, uh, just for the sake of example, uh, that this angle measure is 60, and I'm not saying that this is the case, and I said angle 1 is greater than angle 4, this measure is 55. Then I know that 5 and 6 are going to be both 90 degrees. This leaves me with a balance of 30 degrees for angle 2. And in this case, I have 35 degrees for angle 3. So I know that angle 3 is going to be greater than 
angle 2. And I know that because since angle 1 and 2 must add up to 90 degrees, and angle 3 and 4 must add up to 90 degrees, if 1 is greater than 4, then 3 must be greater than 2. All right, so now I have uh, almost done. 5 is equal to 6, greater than angle 1, greater than angle 4, greater than angle 3, greater than angle 2. Now I have to figure out where uh, angle 7 here, angle x, w, y, falls in place uh, in this entire relationship uh, and listing the angle sizes from smallest to largest. Actually, I said smallest to largest, so I'm doing it from largest to smallest. So once you think about it for a minute, we'll come back and solve it. So in order to solve this, we need to think about the larger triangle. We're going to go back to the larger triangle. And we recalled the relationship of um, x and y. So uh, angle x is greater than angle y because it was a side opposite 15, the longer side. Now, similarly, we can say that uh, angle 7 x w y, since the sum of x z plus z w is going to be 14, so x y is 14, angle 7 is going to be right in between 1 and 4. All right, so. <clears throat> Uh, I end up with angle 7 being here because angle 7 is less than angle 1. It's uh, the angle opposite the side that has length of 14. Uh, so it's smaller than x but larger than y because the side opposite y is 13. So 14 greater than 13, greater than y, 14 less than 15, less than x. So now I have my relationship set out. 5 is equal to 6 going from longest to shortest, greater than 1, greater than 7, greater than 4, greater than 3, greater than 2. This is a cool problem. Hopefully you enjoy doing it and enjoy trying to solve it. Now let's move on to another uh, practice problem. Two more practice problems and we'll be done. Okay, so given the diagram is shown, list the sides in order from smallest to largest, A, C, C, B, A, B, A, D, and C, D. And we're going to go ahead and solve this straight away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in, uh, I've, I'm given I have a right angle here, altitude and hypotenuse. I'm going to fill in the missing values. So I have uh, uh, B, D, C was given at 20 degrees. Now D, C, B is 70. D, C, A is 20. And D, A, uh, C is going to be 70 degrees. So we established the relationships for each of the given triangles. So here is triangle 1. Let's call this triangle 1 and then triangle 2. So I know that B, C, the side opposite 90 degrees, is the largest side, B, D in order opposite 70 degrees, and then DC opposite uh, the 20 degree side. In the second triangle, I have AC, which is greater than side opposite the 90 degree angle, uh, greater than uh, DC, which is the side opposite 70 degree angle, which is a side, uh, which is greater than a, uh, AD, excuse me, AD, which is a side opposite the 20 degree angle. All right, so I set up my relationship. I know that BC is going to be greater than AC. So BC is going to be greater than uh, AC, because I have in a larger triangle, <clears throat> this 70 degree angle means that BC is going to be greater than AC, this triangle here. So I said that BC is greater than AC, and I know that BC and AC are the two largest sides of their respective triangles, one and two. So that BC is greater than AC. Now I have to figure out where uh, DC and AD fit in. Well, DC here is the smaller of uh, uh, the sides for triangle 1. So AC, BC is greater than AC, which is greater than DC. So here is DC, which is greater than AD. So the remaining value that I have to fill in is going to be BD. So I have BC is greater than AC, which is greater than DC, which is greater than AD. So DC here, DC here, and they're both, they must be greater than AD because they're both the same segment. So I have to figure out the relative uh, relationship of BD amongst all the segments. Well, if I go back to my altitude and hypotenuse uh, theorems, I remember that the altitude squared is equal to AD times BD. Right? And I know that CD is uh, greater than AD. So therefore, if CD is greater, and I've, uh, I remember that because <clears throat> I have this relationship here. I've listed a DC, but CD is greater than AD. So if CD is greater than AD then BD must be larger than uh, CD. And why is that? Let's say I said that CD, uh, CD was 6. So I say 6 squared is going to be equal to AD, which we'll call 4, and BD, which we'll call 9, just to make this a true statement. So in this case, CD is greater than AD. 6 is greater than 4. That means that BD must be greater than 
CD. All right, so I list the sides now in order. BC is greater than AC, which we determined uh, greater than DC and AD, and then we put our uh, segment BD, the remaining segment, in between AC and DC as we establish that from the altitude and hypotenuse theorems. Okay, last problem, and then we're all done. One more problem to do. Uh, all right, so number 22, if two sides of a triangle have lengths x, y, x, and y, uh, and the third is z, what is the range of possible values of the third side? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the inequalities uh, based on uh, the theorem that we discussed in the lesson, and we'll just review that real quickly. Uh, and that said, theorem 30, the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal uh, is going to be greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. So again, we call the exterior angle is going to be equal to x plus y, the remote interior angle. So therefore, uh, the exterior angle must be greater than uh, either x or y. Okay, so going back to the problem, we set up our relationships. So I know x plus, uh, oh, excuse me, wrong theorem. Let's go back to, uh, here we go. Okay, I got the straight this time. So back to our postulate, the sum of the measures of any two sides of a triangle always greater than the measure of the third side. Uh, so we wrote out each of the inequalities, the three inequalities we can derive from that postulate. And so we apply them to this triangle uh, with the sides x, y, and z. Okay, so x plus y is going to be greater than z, right? x plus y is greater than z. That's the first one. I'm going to rewrite this as z is greater than x plus y. Second inequality we can say is y plus z is greater than x. Now I'm going to rewrite this uh, in terms uh, of x and y uh, for z, and I end up with z is greater than x minus y. So I subtract, I'm actually going to subtract y from both sides, I end up with z is greater than x minus y. So the first inequality here, second inequality here, and then the last is x plus z is greater than y, and again I have z is greater than y minus x as I subtract x from both sides. So I end up with three different inequalities. Z is greater than x plus y. Uh, I'm sorry, z is less than x plus y. Pardon my mistake, z is less than x plus y. So three inequalities. Z is x less than x plus y. Uh, second, z is greater than x minus y. And third, z is greater than y minus x. So the first one is pretty straightforward. Z is going to be less than x plus y. I can simply rewrite that here. Z is less than x plus y. Now, z is greater than y minus x and x minus y. Well, let's think about that for a second. Let's say that x is 6 and y is 4. That means that z is going to be greater than 6 minus 4. Z is greater than 2. Well, how can I include the fact that y minus x, uh, z is also greater than y minus x? Well, if I think about this again, is how can z be greater than 4? minus 6. The way we uh, determine that or write that as an equality is we say that z now is greater than the absolute value of x minus y. All right, so um, either way we look at it, the absolute value of x minus y, I'll get a value which z will be greater than. In this case, uh, so I write out my uh, inequality, z is greater than x minus y, absolute value of x minus y which is uh, z is less than x plus y. All right, that's it for Otten Math. Thank you for joining. Uh, we'll see you next time when we talk about the hinge theorems in the next edition of Otten Math.